Good morning, San Antonio. Community-based art education is an interesting petri dish of art history, art thinking, art making, art instruction, and art fellowship. People from various walks of life coming together for a few hours a week to learn. What happens is remarkable. No grades are given, no degrees are granted, but knowledge, best practice are shared daily. I have been teaching at the Southwest School of Art for 14 years in a variety of classroom situations, from art history, photo history, photo theory, and over 19 different photo classes. And I've never once dumbed down the information or expected less of my students than I would at a traditional college or a university. For context, the Southwest School of Art is a vibrant art school located in lovely downtown San Antonio. We've been teaching community art classes for over 50 years, and two years ago, we launched the only non-for-profit art college in the state of Texas. We have really good studios. We teach a variety of medium from painting, drawing, printmaking, ceramics, fibers, metals, new media, photography, and a dozen others. Our classes range from a Saturday morning class on an intensive subject to weekend and week long intensives taught by world renowned artists to traditional semester long classes. I believe strongly in liberal arts education. I believe that it sets people up to be thinkers, problem solvers. I believe that it gives them the tools to navigate the complex world in which you live in. But as a first generation college graduate, I can tell you that the road to higher education is difficult, is rife with problems. And I believe that community-based art education can be a viable alternative for some folks. This visual lecture that we're gonna explore is going to look at the artwork of three students that I've had the opportunity to work with for over 11 years. Our relationship moving from teacher to student, to mentor, student, and eventually peer-peer. I believe that it's through these long-term relationships where trust is earned over time, where genuine friendship develops, where innovation can and does happen. Let me introduce you to the first person that we're going to look at. The first person that we're going to look at is Tracy. Tracy is a true child of the 1960s. She went to college for five years, amassing enough credits to graduate, unfortunately not in any one discipline. <laughs> but leaving college with more knowledge than most and a desire not to lead a boring or a prosaic life, Tracy moved, as some people do, to Trelangua, Texas. And it was in Trelangua that Tracy discovered her love of photography. And she, with a quirky eye, in a really interesting sense of composition, Tracy created a little business out of her interpretation of the culture and the landscape of the Big Bend area. Her father lived in San Antonio and became ill, and she needed to move here to become her, his primary caregiver. And for six years, Tracy and I worked together, learning how to print through dark times, through emotional times, through really hard, nose-grinding stuff. We worked together and Tracy became an excellent printer. The work that we're gonna look at here is titled um, Kindred Gestures. And as the title suggests, they're kindred and they're gestures. They're exploring the universal language of interpersonal communication. The model in the photograph is her daughter. She ages from 14 to 17. They're awkward, they're elegant, they're simple. They tell us open-ended stories that we have to invest in from our experiences to derive meaning from them. They're all printed 20 by 20 in the dark room, exquisite examples of what can happen with slow, concentrated thought. I like them quite a bit. The next person that we're gonna look at is Kara. Kara went to SMU, she studied art history. After college, she went to work in a large law firm as an office manager. A few years later, her and her husband moved to San Antonio and she started taking photo classes. Initially, Kara was drawn to still life. You all know what still life is. It's the artful and dynamic arrangement of objects on a flat plane and these are photographed or painting. In photography, what's complicated about it, even after you make a beautiful piece, there's so much more to organize. The world, <laughs> the world wants to be organized and put together in, in places. Kara had her breakthrough at the dining room table working with her young son on a science project that was dealing with taxonomy. And through catalogs and looking at images of insects 
and reptiles. She started ordering, ordering specimens, and she created these strange worlds. This body of work is titled Order Kingdom. And they're using insects, mechanical drawings, mechanical drawings that have been altered, blueprints, and they're peculiar. They're also open-ended narratives. Our experience also informs how we think about them. They're shot with a four by five camera, very simple, printed on 11 by 14 paper, the basics of photography. But there's something elegant, exquisite, funny about this. This makes me laugh. This doesn't make me laugh, but I enjoy this quite a bit, right? It's enigmatic. There's a lot to consider. The last person that we're gonna look at is Brian. Brian studied biology and chemistry at St. Mary's. After college, he went to work as a research scientist. He worked really hard, wrote many academic papers, was really involved in what he did, but he also took pictures. He took a lot of pictures. He had one foot kind of firmly planted in photojournalism and one foot firmly planted in fine art. And because of his background in chemistry, he was not at all intimidated by the chemical processes that we use in, in, the, in photography. In fact, it helped him. He, ex he just excelled. Um, but he really found himself when he started using a Polaroid camera. Now, you're all familiar with Polaroid cameras. You, know, you take the picture and you know, a few seconds later, an image comes out and you're left with this image in your hand. Well, that's kind of what happens here, but instead of just the image that's left in your hand, you also have to peel it apart and you're left with a negative. And that negative, when it first comes out, is caustic, it's nasty, you don't wanna touch it, but dealt with properly, it becomes a, something that you can use in the dark room and you can make prints from. This body of work that we're looking at here is called um, Drag Culture, and it explores the vibrant, lovely community along the Main Street Strip, mostly exploring the gay bars. Um, what I really love about this process is the blacks. The blacks are inky, they're gloomy, right? They're really dark. As a result of that, the figures in front of that are coming forward in a way that's really three-dimensional, that can't be mimicked by other processes except one that we can't use anymore because it was too caustic. The images are tragic, they're funny, they're odd. And let me tell you that love is alive at the Lone Star on Saturday night. <laughs> These three students' artworks and their experiences are not rare in long-term learning environments. I could have shown you another 20 examples of what happens. I could have showed you 20 different students' work and told you a bit about their story. And I, I assure you that each of them are compelling and their artwork is interesting. My colleagues could do the same. People take community art classes for a lot of reasons, right? It's, they wanna get out of the house on a Tuesday night. They're interested in the subject. It doesn't matter how people arrive. What matters is that folks have a genuine good outlook, a positive attitude, and that they take a risk and get out there. I encourage you to get out there and take a class. Doesn't matter what the subject matter is. It could be painting, drawing, cooking, a language, but according to my 10-year-old daughter, Winter, not a Zumba class, absolutely not a Zumba class. But taking a class encourages learning, and learning is contagious. It will affect your personal view. It will affect our community's view. Occasionally, it'll affect our worldview. Get out there, do something. Thank you. <laughs>